This is the party, and this is the feast. Even though the contest looks crazy on TV. Welcome everyone. We are here in beautiful Montpellier for the FIS 2023 edition. And we are live for the Snipes UCI BMX Freestyle Flatland World Cup Men Final. I'm Don Granger. I'm here with Daryl now. Daryl, how's it going? The energy is high. It's such an honor to be here with Dom, all the riders, not only here at Montpellier, but especially around the world. This is one of the best events for Flatland. Absolutely. This is one of the stable events along in the calendar in Flatland. You can see there are a lot of people that made the move to come and watch the best rider in the world compete for the World Cup final for men. We have a beautiful setup here. Uh, it's, uh, it's for this competition and the format for the final that we're going to have here is going to be the top eight from the semifinals who have the eight best riders in the world, basically. One run of three minutes per rider, and the judge, uh, they go for overall impression. Yeah, that impression the riders are going to want to make on the judges. We have over 30 riders and cut the pack down to eight. So when you say this is the best of the best, they are going to be bringing it. They're going to be working this course with flat ground, with their wheels, their foot, to basically put together tricks in that 180 seconds. It's going to be a balance between difficulty, their flow and style, originality and creativity, but also it's going to be about consistency. That is the key thing, because if a rider steps down or crashes, they are going to be penalized with the points within that 180 seconds that are on the clock, Dom. Yeah, it's going to be a tough job for the judges, but we have a wonderful, wonderful panel of judges, and these guys are professional. They know what they're doing, uh, and uh, we're going to see them as soon. It's going to be the judges' presentation here. Um, on the stage that you can see them in the back there very official looking with the uci polo shirt uh, can you tell us they a little bit about the judges there with pleasure because they are all grandmasters of bmx you actually see our head judge right there Lucas, he was once world champion. We also then have out of Germany, Michael Steingraber from the United States. We have Ryan Russell, and also from Great Britain, we have Ephraim Catlow. So those are the who's who of BMX Grandmasters. They are going to be putting their eyeballs peeled on the riders. They have a very difficult decision to essentially give a numeric value from zero up to 99.99 for the riders with their 180 seconds. We are seeing uh, the riders starting to line up on the stage here. What a great panel of riders. Uh, you have a couple that are already there. So first one that's going to be going today is going to be Vicky Gomez uh, from Spain, followed by Joris Bretagnol from France, Varro Hernandez from Spain, Matthias Dandois from France, Total rock star here at these Moto Sasaki from Japan, Shoji Yu from Japan as well, Jean William Prévost, a fellow French Canadian, I'm happy to see him back here, and uh, Kiyo Hayakawa, who is uh, the rising star of BMX. Here we are. So, Jorge Gomez, most known as Vicky Gomez. In seventh place of the of the semi final, we're gonna have Joris Bretagnol. So you, the order that you see these guys is the reverse order from what they qualified in the semi final. 
Vao Hernandez looking zen and prepared. Calici à la cinquième place. L'homme que l'on ne présente plus, mesdames et messieurs, représentant Arobas. Do we even Stokers, need to name this guy, Mathias Dandois? He always gets the most applause I think from the crowd. Definitely a favorite. From Japan, Moto Sasaki. Il n'est pas venu tout seul, notre ami Sasaki, représentant lui aussi le pays du soleil, le vent. J'aimerais qu'on fasse du bruit pour le Rider Monster et Grassroots, Monsieur Yu Shoji. Mr. Shoji Yu from Japan. Le Rider suivant en a eu marre. Il a décidé de créer sa propre marque, EG Bikes, Reclamation and Far East. Le Canada, le Québec, Monsieur French Canadian Jean William Prévost representing here on stage. Et enfin, il a été qualifié numéro un en demi qualification numéro un. Et maintenant, pour ses finales, il est toujours au sommet, représentant Red Bull, Colony, Matin Portage, du bruit pour qui And I. And our on qualifier, Kiyo Hayakawa, right there. He is going to be our last rider to go. He has that privilege because he earned that. He's going to get a chance to watch all other seven competitors, see what they put out here, and then he can wind up adjusting accordingly, playing with that risk versus reward, trying to get that top score. All right, what an amazing start list that we have here for the UCI BMX Freestyle Flatland uh, final presented by Snipes. Uh, look at these names. This is going to be a battle, a one in a lifetime battle. A lot of the guys here are absolute legends in the sport and they will be doing everything they can to show that uh, they can uh, win this competition. So we're going to go, first of all, while the riders are warming up, we're going to go take a look at the highlights of what happened in the semi-final. A lot of smiles, good energy despite the rain. And I say good energy because everybody really, really gave it their 1000%. Why? Because this was a semi final, and we could, th we thought that it might have been used as the final if the weather was going to go horrible that would mean that the results of the semi-final would have gone as final results and as you could see even yesterday it was raining but the crowd was there and thanks to the setup of the stage this year we have a roof over the head of our riders they could still dry the ground enough just to be um just to be able to ride a little bit. So everybody gave it all in. Jean-William Prévost was very happy with his run. We saw him right after the semi-final and he was saying that it was about time that he could pull a perfect run here at Fees. So I know that it is absolutely pumped up for this event. But the competition will be fierce because there is Mathias Dandois, who, who is also back, of course, once more. Big, uh, big names like Moto Sasaki and the new name in the game since a few years, Kiyo Hayakawa. Here that you can see on screen, Kiyo has, was winner here last year in Montpellier in 2022. 
he was kind of discovered, if I can say, in uh, the X game, Shiba. He started his career only in 2021. I mean, the guy was born in 2002, and at that time, a lot of the riders that he will be competing against, they were already riding their BMX bikes. So it's gonna be a great show, and to have some new blood here on the stage, it might spice things up quite a bit, and even more than what we're already used to. So, oh, we have our MC and we have a lot of people trying to hype up the crowd. You can see it's still wet on the ground, but people are there. They don't care if they are sitting in the mud. They are just happy to be witnessing some of the best BMX riding in the world. So, in the first heat, the guys that you're going to see riding are going to be Vicky Gomez from Spain, who's going to start the whole show. Followed by Joris Bretagnol from France, Varro Hernandez from Spain as well, and Matthias Dandois from France. French Spanish heat, full on. It's going to be some heavy stuff that will be thrown down on this stage. Very exciting. People are ready. Riders are ready. Getting in the zone. So first up, Vicky Gomez. Hello, Vicky. Welcome. Welcome back, Vicky. Dom, Vicky is such a talented rider, 42 years old. He's been six times world champion. He actually has also won the Red Bull Circle of Balance three times, which is such a prestigious competition in BMX, especially for Flatland. It shows the originality and creativity. Let's look for his riding. He definitely does a lot of great pivot tricks and his feet, he likes to really put on the pegs, but also one thing to note, he has a titanium bike, so it's going to be a little bit lighter than most other riders out there, but let's see what Vicky brings. So... Starting strong for the Spanish rider here. Solid. And the goal is to link and to do combos, so to add the more and more and more movements, links one after the other, without putting the foot feet back on the pedal. Yeah. Yes. Now watch out Vicky right here. He utilizes both front and back wheels. Some riders are technicians where they focus on one part of the bike. But what we're seeing Vicky right here is he uses that back leg to balance and find his position and he just works through the bike and he's able to just find that sweet spot. Yeah. Oh, a slight foot down. And here, unfortunately, we're going to be looking for perfection in this final because the level is absolutely off the charts. But if someone can do it, it's definitely Vicky Gomez. Boom. All right, one and a half minutes left for Vicky Gomez. There we go. On retourne le vélo, on va prendre de la vitesse ici. Et Getting on va continuer à pousser jusqu'au bout, toujours sur la roue arrière. Attention Allez, à la sortie. Pas. Oui Yes, Vicky right there. You saw the way that he flipped the bike around to a half flip. And then landed smooth for that transition out. Vicky looks so confident out here. I mean, he's got a lot of experience. He's definitely a veteran of the sport, and a lot of the riders have taken some of his techniques and tricks throughout the years. But right now, Vicky just looks in his element. And look at the speed. Uh -huh, having some difficulty. Come on, Vicky. This is the work of a lifetime. Ah, uh, not quite there for Vicky today. As we said, we are looking for perfection, but 
works. It does not mean that the whole run is to go throw out the window. Far from that. Yeah, perfect style right there. Just you saw bouncing on the uh, back tags and trying to hop around. I mean, I love that Vicky does focus on the full bike, and you just see how we can take a foundation trip, throwing the bars, just such a smooth cadence. So he's got to work the clock, 12 seconds to go, and he's got to complete the win by the time the clock ends or it will count. And that is yes. it. Nice finish for Vicky Gomez. Good to see a finish like this. Had a few mishaps during his run. But he is definitely... That was a huge ending for Vicky. You saw that he was able to put it together clean at the end. We talk about that time. They got to complete the link before the clock ends. And Vicky right there just cleaned it up and then got it done before that buzzer. He is definitely a legend in the sport. And he's been here for a while, coming to fees for many, many years. And actually, at my first fees in 2013, he was on top of the podium. So that is to tell how long this guy has been on top of podiums, because he started way before that as well. Yeah, Vicky, as you mentioned, six times world champion. He's got so many Nora Cups where you're basically your peers, your fellow rider, vote for you for number one rider. So he's always liked not only with his fans, but also with the crowd. You heard that warm welcome as he came out onto that stage. And look at the body position right there, just so clean and dialed. Utilizing that wheel, flipping the bike around, that was a huge combination. And then smooth as he just has that exit right to pedals. Pulled some great combos to get a maximum of points here. And thank God for thank God for slow motion replays. Especially in a sport like this one. Very risky finish right there. Big jump, leaping all the way, and then Vicky getting it done. So we have a 72.33 for the Spanish rider. So quite a high score to start. Uh, everything, all the other scores is kind of going to be based out of this first run. Being a first rider in a heat is always a tough thing. Now, French rider Joris Bretagnol. He's been having a great start to his year. He actually just got first at the cycle week in Zurich last weekend. So he's coming in hot with a lot of confidence. And let's see if that can transfer over to our flatland final. There we go. We are starting already with a completely different style than Vicky Gomez, and that's what's hard, especially with uh, BMX flat, is that the personal style is a big part of how a rider express themselves. But you have to judge them once again, one against the other. Boom! Getting hyped up from the crowd and getting ready for his next combo. Tom, I had a chance to talk with Joris before the event, and he said he traveled here with his girlfriend, Marion, who also rides with, and she helps coach him on and helps really give him that confidence to put his runs together. And it looks like doing really good as far as following that game. Joris getting some energy from the crowd. So far, so good. Starting with cross feet for his next combo. Perfect way to start. Yes, stomping it. So one thing to note as well, all of his focus has been on that back wheel. 
riders can choose whatever tricks they want to do. And sometimes you have a specialist that will focus, and it looks like Juris is going to really continue to focus on that back wheel. That's what he's known for as far as his combos go. And you're not penalized if that's what you choose on. Uh, if you choose to focus or specialize on one part of the bike, the judges do know that, but they will potentially reward a little more if you select different parts, whether it's front, back wheel, or combos linking one to the other, because there's a higher degree of difficulty. Uh, still a 45 seconds to go for Joris. Started well, had a couple mishaps. Need, asking the, the crowd for some more support. Come on, all the way. You see him pumping with his leg to get that speed and step on it, holding the bike behind him. Yes! yes. That is really interesting that you bring up the speed because for as far as the show goes, when you're an outsider to the sport, it might be more impressive when someone's going really fast in circles. However, the slower you go, the harder it is to keep your balance. Oh. What? Oh. oh my gosh, you see the way he's just handing the bike off yeah. around him. That's what absolutely we in love with the fellow Frenchman. The MC's are the MC's mind is blown as well, it would seem. Wow. We were paying attention to that clock, but we saw that the time wound up for that combination going past that, so that combo won't necessarily count towards his score, but he had so many good combinations. Look at that fancy footwork from being crossed to uncrossed, and again, focusing on that back wheel. You see that he's finding his pivot point and able to just spin around and then stepping up onto the pedals, which is absolutely mind-blowing. The way that he's able to hold that balance point and be with the bike completely upside down, holding on and just working that circle round and round. That was such a difficult combo. And uh, the fact that he was able to do that in the middle of the run um, it just shows you how in control Juris really is. Yeah, it is absolutely mind blowing the control that uh, these riders have, and especially in a combination like this, as you said, trying to move your feet while you're already in balance balance on one wheel with a bike that is behind your back, basically. That is a tour de France. You know, the thing with Flatland, a lot of these riders will be in their own isolated area when riding. Jorks usually rides next to a quiet, serene lake. They'll just ride there by himself. His girlfriend, Marianne, will be there cheering him on and talking with him. And it's very different than being in front of thousands and thousands of fans. And it's really great to see him pick and be able to deliver under that pressure and that crowd where it's more supporting, where some riders will fold under that. So big ups to Joris for real delivering in his run. Absolutely. So we are waiting for the score and for the judges to deliberate. And we have a 76.66. This puts him in first position for the moment, but 76 is not the highest score we're going to see today. I am sure of that. Yeah, but we got to give it up for any rider even making it to this final. The semifinals that you were mentioning, because of the potential rain, every rider poured it on yesterday and brought their A game. So it's such an accomplishment to even be here. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with the whole panel of riders that we have in Sanity. So next up, Vajo Hernandez. A little bit younger rider, if I may say, but still, uh, this is something that uh, I noticed is in this final. If you take the average of, of age of the riders, it is a completely different set than for, for example, BMX Park or in other sports that we have here at Viz. Because it takes years to get to that level. Yeah, Varo, let's take note. He's been really pushing his riding. He's actually been
been working on mixing both wheels where you know we're talking about that right now he's focused on the rear wheel let's see if he brings that to the contest which would be new for him but Dom, one of the coolest things about Varro's style, I like to think of him as a minimalist. He really has clean design, and he lets his riding just speak in big outlines, and you see just how beautiful his body position is right there. It's almost a nice silhouette of working through with it being technical, but not too much. So he just strips it down and lets the riding just have its own unique voice when he's on the course. So started, Ooh, as go. you mentioned, started on the back wheel and uh, switched to the front wheel. There we go. Yes. Varro is riding for fly bikes in Canna. He's actually on a new prototype 20 inch flatland frame. So he's been working with the geometry with fly given his input right here. And it's cool to see that he has input not only with his riding, but also the parts that he's on. So we see him working that front wheel now, and he's getting in that position where he's pumping, and he's able to build and generate his speed by using his body weight, and that was a clean exit. You can tell that Faro's sight. Very clean indeed, Daryl. You can tell, like, as you said, that he's been practicing on both wheels. He, is, he seems to be a very versatile and, as you said, clean style. So he's going for something here. Didn't quite get it from the first try, but that's the good thing with the running clock is that they can give it another try afterwards. Oh, yeah, this is one of his signature moves, getting in that position that foot was on the pedal. Laura told me he wanted to give a big shout out to his parents, Paloma and Miguel, also his sister Anna and his friends from the El Barrio who are cheering him on. He said that support really means a lot as he's following his career as a BMX Flatland Pro. Now watch on that pedal, taking both hands right off in that balance point and then hopping to his back peg and you see that one leg just pivoting to find that balance as well. So he's got eight seconds, five, time for a final thought. What's Varro going to do? Yes, right. right on the buzzer. Beautiful run from Ma Varro Hernandez. Very smooth, all finesse. So Varro also did a lot of work in Madrid, in Spain, where he lives with the local government. He's actually been working on a BMX school where he's been helping the next future generation get involved with riding very hands-on and really trying to just spread the word of BMX, not only globally at our UCI Flatland events, but also just on a local level. And that's a really important thing to have that foundation, have that structure, because you need the support. You have to show riders, and as much as it's a competition, it's also a community where it's the brotherhood, the sisterhood of riders that really comes from that extended hand and that's what Varro's doing by working with his BMX school. And this is a very important piece of work what you're mentioning here because this is by shaping the future of a sport and uh, allowing kids to see and to access a sport that you can make sure that your sport, that your beloved discipline will keep going on and that things will keep progressing. Because if the kids don't have access to the bikes, to the to the teachers, or even that if they, if they don't see the sport, they won't even have the idea of doing it. As I mentioned before uh, in, in other conversations that we had, Daryl, if you can see it, you can be it. And Fils Montpellier here is a massive part of that as well, because this is open to the whole family. You can come with kids of all ages, old kids, young kids, uh, grandparents, whoever, but whenever you bring the young ones, they can see, oh, this is a possibility for me. And we have a new leader 
Val Hernandez takes the lead with an 80.0. Beautiful round score. Next rider up getting a hug from Alex Jumelin and from the big boss here at Fils Hervé, André Benoit. They know each other really well. And Mathias is about to start. He knows this place like no one else. He knows this crowd like no one else. He is hungry for the victory. Matthias, Matthias Dandua, another time world champion. He's a crowd favorite here. He's actually riding his own signature bike, his own signature Dockers clothes. He's got his own signature. Watch, watch on. The reason he's got all these signature parts is because everyone wants a piece of the superstar, Matthias Dandois. He delivers when it's under pressure. And I have a feeling, Dom, Matthias is going to put all of his chips on the table and he's going to want to come out in that top spot. And he's going to really go for it and try to push the younger generations of the sport forward here. Absolutely. Here is the Matthias Dandois show about to start. Clock is on. Yes, there's some signature Matthias Dandois style. Look at the body position. It's always so clean and he's got that picture perfect silhouette. Wrapping around, you see the way that he's grabbing and then cleanly executing. You know what? I always surprise me with Matthias. He pulls out a trick and he makes a fix. He is so excited and he seemed so surprised every time to have done it. But if someone should know that he can do it, it's him. Well, Tom, the big part of Flatland is definitely that showmanship aspect. Oh. Matias touching down a little bit, but able to recover and keep going. I don't know how that's possible. He didn't even skip a beat on his rotation and just had a quick little touchdown and completed the rest of that length. Yeah, he basically kept his movement going throughout putting his feet down. He kept his rotation going and kept uh, caught his bite bike right back. So Matias also riding for Vans and he has a lot of input on the BMX program and that's because he knows that how important his shoe touching contact with his pegs, his tires, and just being able to have that very intimate knowledge of his bike. That's how he's able to get in these positions. And you see he's just again utilizing that one foot and now pumping to build his speed. And look how he accelerated. I mean, he just tripled his speed in that small amount of time and he's able to glide and then oh. hop around with that new combo right there for Matias. That was a beautiful combo. When you think it's over, well, think again, because it is not. Look at this, getting some speed. Yes, took his hands off right there while he was spinning around, and then Matias seamlessly getting back into the other positions, and that combination, a lot of meat right there in his run, but we got to keep an eye on that clock down. He only has 28 seconds to go. What will he bring us for those few seconds left? I'm sure he has something up his feet. Well, we have a brand new track. Yes! Boom! <laughs> I'm telling you, every time he looks so, he looks as excited as if it was his first time performing at a high level like this. He is just, he, you can see, this is the face of passion for his sport. 
Yeah, Dom, that energy that Matias puts in, I mean, that's why he's nine-time world champion. Matias, whenever he's in New York City, we always go out riding together. And I got to tell you, even on a quote-unquote mellow day, when he has a trick he wants to do, he just clicks into that zone and gets so focused. And you saw that at the beginning of his run. And that intensity, it's a fire that burns inside of him. And then when he pulls that combo, it's like this release where then all of a sudden you see he connects it. He gives that energy to the crowd. He's such a showman, and because of the experience he has, he's able to just have a good time with the crowd, and that energy goes back and forth. And we're going to see. We loved it, but it's going to really be up to the judges. And if the score will be able to potentially beat Varos, which is an 8-0.00. The thing that we want to note with Matias's run is that he worked the front and rear wheel. He didn't just focus on one specific part of his bicycle. And he just had that really great spin. And watch this right here as he just finds that perfect balance point, gets up with the head tube, finds a round, and then jumps right to the other side. Didn't touch down at all, and then found that balance point to just whip his back end around. This is an absolutely beautiful run to watch. What an incredible athlete. And such a singular style as well. You can tell it's him just by, even if you had just a silhouette, you could say, this is Matthias. Yeah, I think that's the biggest compliment any rider can get because that means they have their own style. And I've been so proud of Matthias' year on and off the bike. He's been doing so much. He's also newly a father. It's been charging him up. So we are looking at the judges right now. The suspense is on. Matthias is impatiently waiting to know how many points will he get for this run. It was not a perfect run, but the mishaps were small. Here we go, 90! What a jump! 90.00 for Matthias Dandois, putting the bar very high for the riders to follow. Wow, that's what we talked about, Matthias. I knew he was going to put it all on the line and wanted to be on top of that podium. He still has four other riders to go. Uh, a little word for the crowd by Matthias. Sharing the sûr, love, je, receiving je it, but also giving it. Vous prévenir que l'année prochaine ce sera mon dernier fils, donc on fera la fête tous ensemble. And he just ici, announced that Merci beaucoup. next year will be his last feast. Tu peux pas nous faire ça, du bruit pour Mathias Dandois. Wow, that's a big statement right there. That, that is a massive announcement. Mathias is part of the feast since forever. Le fils, wow. c'est un événement légendaire pour nous. Enfin, vraiment, c'est genre fou, le fils. Et quand on, on est là et qu'on dit, bah, c'est le fils, c'est vraiment very, Alors, s'il vous plaît, very shocking news. Matin, We did not expect it. Uh, to reflect on this, we're, we're going to go take a look at the highlights of the heat that just took place. Wow.
What an amazing first heat we had here. And I, I know, I know that things are just going to keep getting more and more and more insane. This is how BMX Flat goes, especially here at Fees. So for our second heat, we have Moto Sasaki from Japan, Yu Shoshi from Japan as well, Jean-Bélien Prévost from Canada, and Kiyo Ayakawa from Japan. Well, we had the French and Spanish heat at the beginning. Now we have the Japanese Canadian heat to follow. This is going to get really interesting. Yeah, we're about to witness a whole different style of riders out here. It's going to be real cool to see the way that they're going to be fit and judge. Also, the crowd reaction, too, because we talk about the show being such a big part with the crowd and the integration. But right now, Moto Sasaki, who's about to ride, he's actually the current UCI world champion. He did really great in Abu Dhabi last year, so he has the opportunity. If he wanted to, he could wear the UCI rainbow jersey. Right now, he's repping the colors of Japan. But I want us to really watch the riding style. He does a lot of cool tricks where he'll end up holding onto and manipulating his seat either with his hand or his arm. And he does cool tricks too where he scrapes the handlebar intentionally on the ground. And here it goes. Already starting with the seat grab as you mentioned. You're psychic or you just know your stuff. I think I'm just a big Moto Sasaki fan. Believe it or not, he's actually a 16-time Japan champion winning the title there. So he's got a lot of experience. He's 38 years old. And some of our riders we're going to see in this heat are only 21. So he's got a lot of that experience. And he can pull into that grace under pressure when it matters at the contest. Yes, you can see how close to the ground he brings his handlebar. If he touches the handlebar on the ground, this could be absolutely disastrous. But he is in such control. Wonderful to watch. Two more minutes for Moto So we're seeing a lot of front wheel focus tricks, but look at the position right there, the foot balancing. Oh, yes. So far, so good for Moto Sasaki. He is in full control. Now let's watch the feet. He tends to cross them up. That's what we're seeing. Oh, and trying to wrap all the way around. Those cross feet, very difficult to do. But let's take another look and see if tap in the energy right now. Il est complètement dingue, on est à l'intérieur du vélo. Un petit whiplash ici qui va bien. Allez Montpellier, on y va jusqu'au bout. C'est maintenant oui. le moment très technique. C'est maintenant qu'il va y avoir le changement Montpellier. What? Amazing control from the Japanese rider here. Yeah, Moto Sasaki looking really good, showing you why he's the current UCI world champion. Let's see as far as the technique goes, if he's going to continue focusing on that front wheel. Whoa, big hop right there. You see getting all the way around and then balancing and getting that pump speed building. There's that handlebar very gently touching the ground right there. And you see that silhouette, the way he's able to lean the bike over as well. The farther you just push it out and manipulate it, the harder it is to have that center of balance and still keep that rotation and spin. There we go. He called it uh, just a few seconds before because you know what? Something Sometimes when something is complete, it is complete. Moto Sasaki looking quite uh, satisfied with his run, considering his reaction at the end of the run. 
Look at that perfect silhouette foot on the handlebars. Now, Moto Sasaki is also another one who has been helping grow the sport of BMX. He lives in Chiba, and he actually has a school there where he winds up running with all the younger generation as well and just planting the seeds. It's a cool thing to see, Dom, and we, we know that the Feats has the Flatland Academy in Montpellier, but now all these other riders are following suit and just helping grow Flatland on that global level because it takes so much commitment and dedication to be a Flatland rider, and if you do have that guidance and it's brought up being a foundation, riders will get involved they will become part of the sport and it will just continue to grow as we've seen exactly and this is the kind of sport that it cannot be truer what to say start them young because it does take the patience of a samurai to get perfection in uh, this kind of sport it is such with such precision that you have to do the trick you can't muscle through this is one sport where you cannot muscle through its finesse its control so we are waiting for moto sasaki score big smiles here from the japanese rider and it is an 88 uh, it places him in second position right after the frenchman mathias dandois so we still have three riders yet to remain. And these riders, we are going to see very different styles. Our next rider, Yu Shoji, talk about speed and power. Um, when I talked to Frank Lucas, our head judge, he was saying the first time he saw Yu Shoji ride, he didn't even know how it was possible to hold on to the bike with the amount of speed and the flatland combos. He was telling me, you got to see Yu Shoji ride. It's something that just, it's, it's mind-blowing. And he's really been proving that by the year that he's been having and making the impact. He's only 21 years old, and he's definitely the new future and face of Flat, not only in Japan, but we're seeing him on the global platform. We want to watch also for bike flips. He's known for doing these pretty wild, big jumping bike flips. So keep our eye peeled, and uh, most likely with the entire crowd go nuts. Starting with speed for Yu Shoji on the front wheel. He's another rider, though, that can focus on both parts of the bike. And we saw that big hop there from the front to the rear wheel. And that, again, is very heavily rewarded because we've got to basically transfer different parts of the bike. And it's also changing the angle in which it touches the ground. So it's hard to work through and that precision. So you showed you right now starting his next link on that front wheel. Pushing to gain speed. What's going to be the next part of his combo? Yes. Stomping it. Two minutes left on the run. What? So that's that speed generation, and I love the way that he's able to just lean the bike over like that. The further that it is from your center point of gravity, the harder it is to have that balance point and still rotate around. So we're just past that halfway mark on the clock. Yu Shoji accumulating the combos and the technical moves. Big transfer here on the front wheel. What? Inside. Huge hop. That's what we talk about, switching, and that's such a risky move because you have all the momentum going and you're transferring your weight while you're doing that big faith. And then you have to find the balance point on your other wheel. 
30 seconds left on the clock for you, Shoji. Oh, deep down. It was perfect until this point. Well, let's see if he can recover, because Matthias Dandois did touch down and still got into the 90s. So let's see if you, Shoji, brings a big hammer. Yeah, that's not quite as stomped as he would have liked, but saved it. Yes! Whoa. Yes! Finishing wow. strong! Wow! Strong indeed, wrapping two times around and just touching the foot. That was a huge ender right there. Big exclamation point. We did see, though, that the run was going flawless, and they had a couple of those touchdowns. Again, Matias Dandois, our current leader with the 90, did touch down in his run, and he's still able to get such a high score. So the judges seem like they are rewarding that creativity and pushing the envelope further. So keep that in mind as we do break down these highlights. He did have a couple of touches, but very solid, utilizing that front wheel that we're seeing here. Also that rear wheel, where you got that big hop, that leap of faith from one wheel and then you land in that balance point so perfectly with just the one foot on the peg and finding that sweet spot to ride out to beautiful linking combos i really enjoy this top view as well it gives a totally different perspective on where the body of the rider is with the bike uh, it's something that we can we don't see usually look at this look at this precision yeah, down that perspective too really shows you the canvas which the riders are working and that's that stage and it's how they find their body and their bike positioned on there and sometimes when you walk, here we go, here we go, yes, you see right there, even surprised, maybe taking a page out of Matthias Dandois' book and just showing you how excited Rise wrapping around two times, but the crowd saw that he's able to just bring it out and deliver, especially at that buzzer right there. So we have uh, Matthias on the screen as well because he knows that the points that Yushoji gets could change things for him. I think right now it's a one round that counts. So the score that we have now is the score that is a final for the riders. It is a 94.33. What a high score. It is amazing. Well, creativity was rewarded. Daryl, you were right. That's unbelievable to see. I mean, listen, the riding was top notch. I'm not taking away from it. He had those touchdowns. Usually, you're pretty heavily penalized for that, but like we said, that creativity shined high, a 94.33. That is an insane score. Given touchdowns, I mean, it just goes to show you the level of riding. Now, the pressure is on for Jean-William Prévost. This is a rider who can deliver if he's in the right mindset. So if he gets in his zone, and I know he can, he can blow this stage up. He can really, really set this stage on fire. Yeah, Dom, you're talking about his mindset. Jean-William Prévost has been in a really good headspace as of late. At the end of 2022, he actually won the Red Bull Circle of Balance. He came out on top with one of the most prestigious events in Flatland, and he actually also just got a silver medal at X Games in Japan. So he's really feeling in a good position and place. He's fired up. Let's see what he wants. And this is the style that we know he has. I the stomping with just a, a little bit beside the pedal, but I don't think this will, this should change much for him. Let's see what else he has. He is really dancing on his bike. Yeah, Dom, you were telling me that 
as far as Jean Valin Prevost being in a good state of mind and having the time of his life out here, he's just hit this rhythm in the last year that I absolutely love. It's appreciation for the sport of Flatland and just getting out here to have all these different platforms. He actually has his own bike company and he sponsors a lot of different riders, Iggy BMX. And it's very cool to see that he's not only an ambassador on the bike, but off the bike and just pushing forward. All right. You can tell he got his confidence. I think he was a little bit nervous at the beginning, really in the zone. And now he's hearing the love of the crowd. He's into it. Is he going to be able to fully deliver? I do hope so for him. So watch. Here we go. A little fun fact. It stands for I got it, baby. And come on, John William Prevo. Yes. Let's get it. Yes. One minute oh, left on focus. the clock. Yeah, he he gets in his zone like this. And he's had ups and downs here at Fees, let me tell you, since I've started to come here, he's had ups and downs. And yesterday he told me, for once, finally, he was so happy to have a perfect run here at Fees. And let's hope for him that he can do that once more today. Yeah, look at the extension of the legs around that head tube and still able to pump to generate that speed. So you can see whether a rider's on their front or rear wheel standing over the head tube or not. That same principle applies. And he is just checking off the boxes. Now, time for another combo with 20 seconds to go. So 20 more seconds. This is absolutely beautiful. Yes, all the way, stumping it. And one last round. Yes! Yes, Jean William Prevot right there. You see the intensity right now. Finishing that run and just taking a second to decompress after he went to battle and put his all out there. I have such a big smile on my face right now. I am so happy for him. He puts so much energy and love into his sport. He is, again, I mean, all these guys are very passionate about his sport, about their sports, but uh, for him, I think it's just like, it's his, it's his blood, you know? It's, it's the, what makes him breathe and live every day. Yeah, also riding Far East Cycles, as we mentioned, he is so much involved with BMX Flatland, having the company sponsoring the riders, spending a lot of time in Asia, and right now he is here in Montpellier, just balancing, doing that back wheel boogie. Absolutely. Beautiful pivot on that back peg. And then find that balance point. You see that what right just pumping to build that speed, having that manipulation in that circle, able to just find the pivot point. And then he steps around. Look at the body position, passes the bike off behind the back, and then cleanly hops the pedals. I wouldn't be surprised if this scores quite well, considering that he did, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if I forgot something, but the mishap he had was a very small fell slip, but he stayed on his bike, his feet didn't really touch the ground. Oh. So, yeah, I mean, he had a huge smile on his face when that happened. It wasn't necessarily like he did step down, but that's going to be for the judges to say. He's definitely a nail biter. It adds to the drama that we hear as the score is coming together. And we know the entire Flatland community is on edge, Dom. Oh, he is so nervous. You can tell. And it's a 90.66. He takes second place in front of Matthias Dandois. 
Yushoji keeps his first place for now because we still have one rider, the rider that qualified first. Your number and one this qualifier is one of the another top generation of Japan. rider from Can Japan. We make some Kiyo noise Hayakawa. The 21 year old rider from Japan was the winner here in Montpellier in 2022. I mean, he started his, his BMX flat career as a pro in 2021. He was born when the other guys were already practicing. One of the best back wheel riders it's unbelievable to think the Cross progression, down, and this is the future in real time of BMX Holy flat. Cow, jump to the back, double footed backyard. So focusing on that back wheel, Set let's see if he sticks to the rear wheel or winds up changing things up. Step He's up, known as a back wheel rider. Step in over that head tube, the foot on the pedal, clean exit. First line pulled for the man from Japan. Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Two more minutes for Kiyo Hayakawa to show us what he's made of. So still focusing on that rear wheel. Wow. Whoa. That truck. Half taken out. Keeping it going. You saw both of those entries and exits right there. He wound up pivoting around with the one foot on it and looking for that sweet spot on this combo. Oh, oh, oh my god. Wow. The crazy thing about what you're seeing is nobody's riding like this. Kilo you can hear a catfish on stage saying nobody is riding one like minute, this. And this clock, rider yo. is always searching oh, since the beginning so. for the never oh, done before so. moves. He oh, even so. calls them the Ayakawa oh, originals. So, oh no, feet down. Come on, one more minute. Well, that was the first mishap we've seen two minutes in. Let's see if I can bring it back to the final 50 seconds. Yes! Seconds, yes. seconds. There we go. 30 seconds. Saving it right there. We are seeing greatness right here. Down to the wire. Get it, Keo. Time for one last combo. What's it going to be? Up on that wheel. Oh. 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 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Come on, what can he pull in? Five seconds. Oh! And nice. stomping with cross feet. What a way to end the run. Just ending the whole thing like this. Montpellier, that was insane. C'était complètement dingue. Du bruit, du bruit, du bruit, bon kill. A lot of cheering, a lot of noise for the Japanese rider, Such for the rider. youngest he the here, I believe, ago. on As stage. A virtual unknown, rising to the top easily. One of the best flatland riders out of Japan. So and many let's take, so a take a look at the replays, Daryl, because it's, we need replays and that kind of stuff. Very back wheel focused in his riding, but look at the way he's able to just pivot right the directions he's about to and the also two. getting set up. Down to the wire, our last competitor, your number one qualifier. Will that run be enough to knock out your current leader, Yu Shoji? So, the famous time machine. He started quite a few combo with this. It is a very impressive trick for at least for an outsider like me. 
No, Dom, it is a very difficult trick. I mean, we heard, like you said, Catfish say no other rider is riding like this. He did have a couple of touchdowns in his run, but what we did see is our current leader, Yoshuji, had the same thing, and he got a score that was a 94.33. So keep that in mind as we do watch some of these highlights, and then I love the way that Kia was able to still squeak in that last trick right before the buzzer, similar to how Yoshuji did as well. Very good points here, Daryl. I don't know how the judges do it, really. You, it must be such a hard job, but this is why we have professionals, uh, professional judges doing this. They need to know every single bit of the sport to be able to be, to have a, a to give scores that are just and fair. Suspense is high for both uh, Kiyo Hayakawa and Yushuji. And it's a 91.5. So our winner today, Yushuji from Japan. <laughs> Getting well celebrated by his peers. Professional flatlander and a skydiver. Wow, 94.33 Japan in the house. What a cool special moment. We have our DJ Ben Olsen pumping the tune, setting the tone. We just witnessed some of the world's best flatlanders throw down. What a beautiful, beautiful contest here to close up the weekend. It was absolutely amazing. The Japan flag flying high. What a performance, really, from all the riders. You have your result list for the Snipes UCI BMX Freestyle Flatland uh, final here in Fiz Montpellier. First is Yu Shoji from Japan with a 94.33, followed by Kiyo Hayakawa with a 91.5, and third place, Jean William Brivo with a 90.66. Those scores were high. I mean, the fourth place has a 90.0. Mathias Dandua had a 90. It's insane. And at some point, there's not going to be enough of 100 points if they keep pushing the progression in the sport like this. Yeah, the fact that there's less than a point separating Matthias Standois and jean Vian Pivot and that podium spot or not, it just shows you how close of a competition it was. But let's take a look at Yu Shoji's run. This was that first place spot in 94.33. And let's watch the focus that he has starting off on that front wheel. We talked about this throughout the competition. If a rider was focused on one part of the bike, or like Yu Shoji would switch back and forth. The judges love that, especially right there, that hop. And that was rewarded so well within their points. So you showed you right here, second combo starting on that front wheel. You can see balance point nice and smooth. And it wasn't just that he switched from one side to the other as far as his wheels go. There were these big leaping hops, which are really risky. You're really hopping, changing your momentum, and you got to find that balance. So look there too, he just really got the bike leaned out to the side, almost hitting the handlebars and stem on the ground, almost beating the keyboard, and it just looked so good. So it was combo after combo after combo for Yu Shoji and the creativity, the technique, the flow that he had the whole time during those three very long minutes for the rider. That was what brought him to the first step of the podium. 
Allez, on voit le côté euh, nerveux du rider là. Ça prend de la vitesse, ça y va fort. So this was kind of that pivot part where we were talking about what was going to go on his run. And I believe this combo he might have had a little bit difficulty on, but there was another huge, massive leap. And you see he's in that spot, just getting that balance point on that front wheel. Back end just being completely manipulated as he hops onto the pet, hops around, and there was a very clean... And I guess it was on the next link, so much is happening in his run as far as the time goes, where he did have that problem and, and was able to keep it going. But that was perfect, Don. That was perfect, indeed. Yeah, that little mishap happened uh, just after the 30-second mark, but went back on, kept the speed going, kept in the zone. And then watch here, the nice topper, the cherry on top of his Sunday of the run, three minutes, and then just in the final seconds, Unbelievable. Wow. wow. And we are back on live with the on with the MC for our podium here for the Snipes BMX flat men final. J'attends le classement final. Est-ce qu'on peut m'envoyer le classement final même si je l'ai en tête? Je ne voudrais pas faire d'impair. J'attends notre chère Céline. Qui peut m'amener le dernier papier. J'espère que vous avez passé un moment agréable avec nous. Si vous êtes en direct sur l'équipe, que vous avez passé un moment exceptionnel ici, c'était la folie, bien évidemment. Donc je compte sur vous pour être présent l'année prochaine. So puisque là, le public a été une fois de plus exceptionnel. Regardez ça, on a encore course, la célébration de notre année. Uh, it was absolutely insane this year, once more. And avec notamment we are all invited to be back next year, hopefully. Absolument for a full, full five days of Fizz Festival with sunshine this time. Nothing cancelled. This time it was uh, a little bit difficult on the logistic uh, things, but we all made it happen. Big, big thank you to the organizers, to the Fizz Montpellier, also to Snipes who uh, were sponsors this specific competition but massive thanks for the 500 plus volunteers who were here early to dry up the parks today and that are absolutely needed for this kind of event so for the third position we have Jean-William Prévost from Canada Incroyable run de notre ami québécois. J'espère que la foule Incredible été run from à la the Canadian rider. Big smile for Jean-Louis Prévost here on the third step of the podium. He is psyched. On applaudit bien fort, on fait du bruit, du bruit, du bruit, du bruit. Troisième place de ce UCI Pianis Flatland World Cup. Ça fait plaisir, n'est-ce pas? On va envoyer maintenant le deuxième so for the rider second à avoir ici. C'est monsieur, pour être certain, du bruit pour le rider Red Bull et Colony, Kiyo Hayakawa Kiyo Hayakawa climbs on the second step of the podium. Kiyo, also with a massive smile, of course. Directeur sportif et légende vivante du FIS. On applaudit bien fort, Monsieur Kyo Hayakawa Japan. Kyo, comme nous le disait précédemment, notre ami Catfish en anglais, qui était il y a un an quasiment inconnu, un amateur exceptionnel, qui a été invité up to et qui one a year ago, was very little known. 
And now he just exploded in the last couple of years, and this is not the last of him that we will see. And now for your champion of the Feeds Montpellier 2023, Mr. Yu Shoji. Montpellier, plus de bruit, plus de bruit, plus de bruit! Yeah. 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 Regardez la joie yeah. qui yeah. se lit yeah. sur son visage! Yeah. Le trophée yeah. et la première place so, pour Monsieur Yu Shoji! Well deserved first place for the Japanese rider. <laughs> Competition was fierce. On a bien fort, nos and trois he grands made finalistes. it to the top of the podium. So thanks, Daryl. This was an exceptional final here at the Fees Snipes UCI's BMX Flatland World Cup Men Final. I, once again, thank you so much for being here with us, for Et all your knowledge. Dom, it's a pleasure to be here, not only with you, but the riders around the world. I love the current state of Flatland. It's growing stronger and stronger each day to get out there and ride. Yes, thank you for everybody who came here, who watched live. We are stoked of this, the results of this event, and we will see you next year. Have a good night.